Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the biasing circuits. In the previous classes, we have discussed about the fixed bias and the emitter feedback bias. In the today's class, we will discuss about the collector to emitter feedback bias. Before going to that, first we will see what is biasing circuits. Biasing circuits are used to operate the transistor in the middle of the uh, active region and that is in the stable region. If you see the DC load line here, uh, there are four types of biasing circuits are there. In that, if you see the DC load line here, this is the DC load line. For the output, the line which is touching the output characteristics is called as a DC load line. The, about the DC load line, we have discussed it in the previous classes. If anybody is not watching the DC load line topics, please go through that video. Then you will know what is DC load line. In the today's class, we will discuss about the collector to emitter feedback bias. Okay, so this is the output characteristics having the three region that is saturation region and the cutoff region and the active region. For the stable operating point, always the transistor should operate at the middle of the active region. But because of some reasons, so this operating point is shifting upwards or downwards. Okay, if it is shifting from the middle of the active region, then we can say that transistor will be in the unstable position. To make it stable, we are using the biasing circuits. So these are the all the biasing circuits, four biasing circuits. In that, we already discussed this two first two biasing circuits. Today, we are going to discuss about the collector to emitter feedback bias. Okay, now, we'll see by using this biasing circuit, whether we will get the stable operating point or not, we will see. So collector to emitter feedback bias. This is a circuit diagram of the collector to emitter feedback bias. It is having the transistor and the three resistors. That is the collector resistance and the base resistance and the emitter resistance. Okay, now here <clears throat> we are taking the NPN transistor. That's why emitter current direction is outside and the base current direction is towards the transistor and the collector current direction is also towards the transistor. Emitter current direction is outside and the base current and the collector currents are the inside. So this is the I current, current passing through this terminal. Okay, now we'll see the what are the parameters we are having. Before that, what is collector to emitter feedback bias, we'll see. Collector to emitter feedback cir uh, bias circuit is used to get the stability good stability and operate the transistor at the middle of the active region or middle of the DC load line. By using this biasing circuit, we can maintain the operating point at the middle of the active region. Then the transistor will become the stable. Okay, now we'll see what are the parameters we are having. We see the parameters here. RB is called as a base resistance. The terminal which is connected to base having the resistor, that resistor is called as a base resistance. And the current passing through the base terminal is called as IB, base current. And the RC is called as a collector resistance. And the IC is called as a collector current, the current passing through the collector. And the RE is called as a emitter resistance. Okay, RE is emitter resistance. And the VCE is called as the voltage between collector to emitter. Okay, collector to emitter here. And the VB is called as the voltage between base and the emitter. Next, VCC is called as a biasing voltage. And here, IE is called as a emitter current here. Okay, this is the voltage between base and the emitter. That is, that's why it is called as VBE. Now, we will apply KVL at the input side and the KVL at the output side. After that, we will apply the uh, that formula in the stability factor. Whether we will get the good stability or not, we'll see. Now apply KVL at the input side. If we apply KVL at the input side, so this is the input side here. This is the this left side indicates the input side here. IB current flowing in the in this direction as it is a NPN transistor emitter current in this direction and it is a collector current towards the transistor and it is the base two emitter voltage. It is a pitch terminal. It is a minus terminal. It is a plus terminal and the minus terminal. Now, we are applying the cable at the input side here. VCC, VCC plus 2 minus minus VBE 
plus 2 minus minus Vb is equal to I into RC. The current passing through the RC is I. Okay, the current passing through the RC is I. That's why it is I into RC. Plus IB into RB. IB into RB. Plus IE into RE. <laughs> I into R E. Assume that it is equation number one. Now, here if we apply KCL at node A, apply KCL at node A. If we, if we apply KCL at node A, we will get here entering current is I is the entering current and I B and I C are the leaving current. So I is equal to, we will get IB plus IC. I is equal to IB plus IC. Assume that it is equation number 2. And we know that one more formula, that is emitter current is equal to base current plus collector current. Base current plus collector current. Assume that it is equation number 3. Now, next step is substitute equation number 2 and 3 substitute equation number 2 and 3 in equation number 1 then we will get vcc minus vb as it is and in place of i we have to substitute ib <coughs> ib plus ic Okay, plus IB, RB as it is, uh, as it is plus in place of IE, we have to substitute IB plus IC into RE. Just in place of I, I am substituting IB plus IC. IB, RB as it is and in place of IE, I am substituting IB plus IC. Okay. Now, here, yeah, from this, uh, if we <coughs> take the IB is common, we will get VCC minus VBE is equal to take the IB common in the above equation. We will get, if we take IB common, we will get RC plus RB plus RE. RC plus RB plus RC plus IC into RC plus IC into RE we will get. From this separate IB then we will get if we separate IB then we will get VCC minus VBE minus IC into RC minus IC into RE divided by we will get RE plus RB plus RC we will get. Okay. VCC minus VBE minus IC into RC minus IC into RE divided by RE plus RB plus RC we will get. Here <clears throat> in the equation here IC will be common. So that's why we are taking the IC is common here. IB is equal to VCC minus VB minus if we take IC is common we will take we will get RE plus RC we will get divided by RE plus RB plus RC we will get. Assume that it is equation number 4. Okay, this is the equation is used to get, uh, find the stability factor. Uh, IB is equal to this equation. Now, we will apply KVL at the output side. If we KV, apply KVL at the output side, this is the output side here. If we apply KVL at the output side, we will get PCC 
minus here place here it is a minus it is a i current it is a ic current it is a ib current and it is a ie current <coughs> it is a voltage between base and emitter it is a plus terminal it is a minus terminal vcc minus vce is equal to we will get i into rc i into rc plus ie into re there are two voltage drops i into rc plus i into re this is equation number 5 now we'll see why the transistor will be in the unstable position we will discuss after that we will discuss about the stability factor we see here if the if the if biasing voltage increases if we increase the biasing voltage the junction temperature increases if the junction temperature increases, what will happen? The reverse saturation current increases. If the reverse saturation current increases, the output current IC will be increases. If the output current IC increases, what will happen? This operating point VCE comma IC will be increases. So as the operating point is increases, that means it is deviating from the middle of the active region. If it is de deviating from the middle of the active region, then we can say that this transistor will be in the not in the middle of the active region, then it will be in the unstable condition. So as, the, as it is unstable condition, to make it stable, we are using collector to emitter feedback bias. Now we'll see whether this collector to emitter feedback bias will be suitable or not to get the stable condition. So why these are increasing the detail clear explanation we have already done in the need of biasing topic. If anybody is not watched that video, please go through that video. Then you can get uh, easy idea of why they are increasing with the equations uh, we already explained in the topic. Please go through that video. So now we'll see <coughs> stability factor of stability factor for collector to emitter feedback wire. Okay, now uh, we have the stability factor formula. S is equal to 1 plus beta by 1 minus beta into dou IB by dou IC. This is the stability factor formula we are having. Okay, assume that this is equal to equation number 6. From equation number 4, from equation 4, uh, the equation 4 we got IB is equal to VCC minus VBE divided by RE plus RB plus RC. Voltage terms, separate voltage term and the current terms. So, IC into RE plus RC divided by <clears throat> RE plus RB plus RC. We got, assume that it is equation number 7. Okay, now it is equation number 7. So, next step is partial differentiation with respect to IC. Finally, what we have to get, we have to get dou IB by dou IC term. Get the dou IB by dou IC term and substitute in the equation number 6. That is our main intention to do the partial differentiation here. Now, if we do the partial differentiation with respect to IC, we will get dou IB by dou IC. Dou IB by dou IC is equal to, this term will become 0. With respect to IC we are doing, that's why it will become 0 and IC will become 1. Finally, we will get <coughs> RE plus RC divided by RE plus RB plus RC. Assume that it is equation number 8. The next step is substitute equation number 8 in 
equation number six that is in the stability factor because we got the do a b by do a c term in any biasing circuit we have to to find the DIB by DIC term to substitute in the stability factor. So S is equal to 1 plus beta divided by 1 minus beta into what is the do AB by do AC term we got minus of RE plus RC divided by RE plus RB plus RC. So we got this equation. Now minus into minus plus we will get. So we will if we rewrite this. S is equal to 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta into RE plus RC divided by RE plus RB plus RC. Now, if we take the LCM, LCM is RE plus RB plus RC. Finally, we will get S is equal to RE. If we take into numerator, it is RB plus RC into 1 plus beta. Here, we will get RE plus RB plus RC plus beta into RE plus RC. <coughs> Here, RE plus RC is common. So, we will get S is equal to RE into, oh, don't take the common here. So, we have one <coughs> condition that since RB is less than less than RE plus RC. Okay. RB is less than RE plus RC. Okay. So, if we neglect that, if we have to neglect RB here. If we neglect RB, we will get here 1 plus beta into RE plus RC. RE plus RC we will get in the numerator. In the denominator also, RE plus RC is common. Finally, we will get 1 plus beta into RE plus RC we will get. This both R will get cancelled. Finally, we will get S is equal to 1. <coughs> From this, we can say that as the stability factor is equal to 1, the transistor will become stable. So, this collector to M by using the collector to emitter feedback bias, we can make it the operating point stable. So, this is about the collector to emitter feedback bias. In the next class, we will discuss about the voltage divider bias or self bias.